Yeah, I founded this organization uh, in 2009, so it's actually pretty, pretty much a baby still. But um, I, you know, I'm, I'm a surfer. That's where it all started. I had selfish motivation. I wanted to go and go back to all the places that I love to surf and uh, find a way to keep going there as my pro surfing career dwindled. And, um, but I was a conscious person, raised by a very conscious uh, uh, set of parents. And um, yeah, here you go, sorry. Um, so basically, here's a shot of me and my dad. And I wanted, this, this is significant to me because um, you know, we're surfers, we're adventurers, we're conscious, but we're family, and we share this passion. And it, it, it really baffled me when I realized that, you know, five-year-old kids were dying from lack of clean water, or anyone for that matter. Coming from here, that doesn't, that doesn't really register for us. We have access to water, we have infrastructure, and it just, it just baffled me. You know, I was thinking, there's got to be a way around this. And of course, just with my very limited uh, experience in all of it, just started doing research and realized that there are so many solutions that exist. You know, there's portable water filters that exist. There's chlorine tabs. Whatever the solutions are, they can be better, but they exist, and they're readily available. And they, they're inexpensive. So then it, then it dawned on me, wait, it's not a question of technology. It's a question of access. I'm an adventurer. I like to get my hands dirty. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. But I can provide access. And so what you'll see, and in the last slide you saw, you know, do what you love and help along the way. What I want to talk about here today is um, the solutions, uh, a bit about what we do, but also philosophy. And our philosophy of going, look, find your purpose or connect with your purpose or your passion and then plug in a cause or purpose into that. You're going to help a lot better, too. And that's a serious uh, energizing force right there. So um, basically, the vision for Waves for Water was simple. Provide access to places that need it through various solutions that exist. Go in and assess the needs. Go into the hardest places to, to, to get into. You know, We worked in Afghanistan and Pakistan, places that nobody wants to go where the biggest needs are, where the people are slipping through the cracks. And, you know, Haiti and, and Africa, and, and we work in 13 countries at this point. And like he said, we've given access to over 7 million people at this point. So the vision was go in and assess the needs and then apply the appropriate solutions. So that could be rain catchment systems. That could be digging wells. It could be filtration. And at this point, it's usually a combination of all those things. So the vision was simple. Go provide this access. Connect the problem with the solution. Um, what we do, I just sort of touched on that, but basically you can see just a photo. You know, that's, those are just two glasses after a demonstration in Indonesia with taking water that no one would dare drink that would actually probably kill you and putting it through a $50 portable water filter that will remove all biological contaminants and make it perfectly potable. I mean, I take the first sip every single time. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm good. You know, it works. So our organization, we do disaster relief. You know, we, we were there for Haiti, um, Indonesia, Japan, Chile, Pakistan floods. That dictates a lot of what we do. Um, we also do development projects. You know, we worked um, a couple months ago here in America. Our first domestic project was with the Lakota Indian tribes in South Dakota. Um, we have mined their land uh, with uranium mines, and now there's uranium poisoning in their aquifers. And so we're helping them with uh, rain catchment systems, which you'll see a photo of. Um, education, you know, it's the huge part of the program is just educating people, not just on how to use these solutions or integrate them into their, into their lives, but um, sanitation, you know, uh, we can, you know, water is the kryptonite for cholera, you know, and, and people don't know that until you teach them, until you say, hey, before you eat, just use this filter to wash your hands, not just drinking water. And of course, I learned this 
uh, very, <laughs> I learned all of this stuff as a crash course while I'm doing it. I'm not an expert. But now I feel like, wow, I have a pretty good view on this. And you know what? This problem is completely solvable in our lifetime. So um, development, you know, same thing. This, is, this was the, with the Lakota Indian tribes. Um, very rudimentary thinking. Let's do a known nonsense approach, a common sense approach to all of this stuff. Solutions exist. Let's attach rain gutters to their roof, feed those pipes into an into 1,100 gallon tank, catch that water, and we'll filter it with these same filters. And you're talking about something that costs total maybe $2,000 that will supply them as much water as they need that will not kill them. So the way I think, uh, what, what I think um, separates us from a lot of other organizations, and, I, and I've come across amazing organizations out there. I think this is a really great time to be, to be an activist. Um, but, you know, how we do it, um, again, guerrilla humanitarianism. Um, I like to think of that DIY humanitarianism model. I want to inspire you guys to go do it yourself. I want to help provide a platform, say, hey, look, where are you traveling next? You know, through us or through any other avenue, buy a $50 filter, put it in your backpack. It's this big. It weighs a half a pound. You can travel with it anywhere, and while you're in that place, Stop by, stop by a school, or maybe it's somebody that's at the hotel, the hired help there, whatever. Just ask around, say, look, you know, do you guys have any needs? I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they, I'm, no one's ever said no to me in these places. You know, Indonesia, you're on your honeymoon in Bali in, uh, in, at the Four Seasons. The other side of the island has a 50% infant mortality rate uh, due to, to lack of clean water. So that's that gorilla model of going, Look, let's, let's try and get every single traveler in the world to, to put a filter in their bag. And that's the viral model. And then Waves for Water as an organization will come, come and keep trying to do big, uh, big partnerships where we can take big chunks out of the problem with uh, corporate partnerships, with uh, big organizations. Um, and the unique style here, this is just, this is who I am. And I've applied all of this lifestyle to the work. I like to go do what I love and help along the way. I like to surf. I like to climb mountains. I, these are the things I like to do. Well, why can't we help the Peruvian Caro villages in the Andes Mountains who don't get any love in the process? And that just makes me, me better at what I'm doing. And so if anything that you can take out of this is just to, I really, I really am inspired by, by this, this philosophy of going and doing what you love to do and helping along the way. So to make that point, I want to play a little video that will sum up most of what I've talked about and really, I think, get, get the point across of, of uh, this philosophy. So. in America growing up in school, you know, the Amazon was always very intimidating. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the wonders of the world. And I don't think the people here really understand the communities in that area and what their needs are. I think they think, oh, there's plenty of water. Well, there is, but it's not clean. The crazy thing about this trip is the, the length it takes to get from Los Angeles to your final destination, which is uh, right at the mouth of the Amazon River. And I was just really shocked when we'd go in to some of these villages on this trip, how well organized they were. It was really inspirational for me because they, they're able to live completely sustainable lives, almost completely. It's just like they're one click off, they're just missing a couple links, and we were able to come in there and provide one of those missing links. We would go straight to the water's edge, right next to their house, to the Amazon River, scoop a bucket of water up that was just brown, filter it, and hold two glasses above it one with the original Amazon water and one with the filtered water, and it was pretty astonishing. 
And then, you know, we all drank it. And we're, we're drinking the Amazon River. I mean, it's one of the biggest water sources in the world. And the fact that we can actually go there and provide a way to clean that and access that as a clean source of drinking water, it's amazing. The, the point of this mission was really, really simple. It's go to an area that you know there's a need, show that need, and also show the solution. And then as the icing on the cake, go surfing and go have fun and, and ride this tidal wave in the Amazon River, you know, this worldwide phenomenon, and just have a bunch of fun in the process. There's a need, there's a solution, and then there's the overall tone of everything that is, that is the Waves for Water model, which is to just go do what you love to do and then help along the way. Thank you. I just want to say one more thing. Um, you know, I've shared with you uh, some, something very inti intimate to me, and this is my philosophy, but the notion that a philosophy like this can't be scaled and make huge impact is just wrong. So go do what you love to do, help along the way, and make a big difference, because you can. So thank you. Thank you.